Good day students, welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the January 2015 Integrated Algebra Regents. Alright, let's take a look at problem number 1. It says, if set A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and B, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. The intersection of sets A and B is... <clears throat> so, intersection basically uh, means the elements that are present in both sets. So, the easiest way for us to find the intersection of um, the two sets is to list them in such a way that identical elements are in the same column, okay? So we have set A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have um, set B, which is two, four, Six, eight, ten, and twelve. Okay, if you notice uh, how I aligned identical elements in the same column, there's a reason for that. When you're looking for the intersection, we're looking for elements that are present in both um, sets. Okay, so for A intersect B, we're looking at two presenting both sets four six and eight okay all right so the intersection of a and b written as a intersect b is a set two four six eight so let's just talk about this set for a minute what this intersection um, is doing is it's extracting the even numbers from set A. Okay, notice set B are all even numbers. So what this intersection is doing is extracting the even numbers in set A, which are 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay? <laughs> all right, let's take a look at problem number 2. It says, what is the value of n in the equation 0 0.2 times the quantity n minus 6 equals 2.8? All right, so this is, we're just solving an algebraic equation here. Now, what makes this equation look complicated? It is the decimal, right? So how can we make it, how can we uncomplicate this uh, complicated situation? We can get rid of the decimal, okay? So since we have just one digit behind the decimal point, we're going to multiply by 10 because 10 has one zero um, behind the one, okay? So we're going to multiply um, the entire equation by 10. So multiply the left side by 10 and multiply the right side by 10 okay so what happens when you multiply by 10 how does that impact the position of a decimal point if you have one zero and you multiply by 10 uh, which has one zero the decimal point will move back one place okay so multiplying by 10 will cause this decimal point to move back one place because of just one zero, and this will move back one place also. Okay, so multiplying by 10, we yield 10 times 0 0.2, this is 2 times n minus 6 equals 10 times 2.8 is 28. Now, there are two ways we can solve this equation. We can either distribute and so solve, or we can divide and solve. Let's um, divide and solve, divide both sides by 2. If we did it the other way, 
you will still get the same answer. All right. So this divides out. Two divides into each other once. You have n minus 6 equals 14. To finish this problem up, you simply add 6 to both sides, and that yields n equals 20. Okay? So our final answer is option number 3. Oh yeah, going back to one, I didn't circle my final answer. Um, it's option number two for problem one. Okay, let's take a look at problem three. This is assessing our understanding of the properties of exponents. So let's go over the quotient property real quick. If you have a to the x divided by a to the y, Whenever you're dividing exponents with the same base, you simply subtract the exponents. Okay? So keep that in mind. In this case here, we have 24x to the 6th, y to the 3rd, divided by negative 6x to the 3rd, y. So first thing we'll do is divide the numbers. What is 24 divided by negative 6? Remember, anytime you're dividing different signs, you always end up with minus. And when you're dividing the same signs, you always end up with plus. With plus. Okay? So, um, so let's just write that down real quick. Minus divided by minus is plus. Plus divided by plus is plus. So dividing the same signs yields a positive sign. But minus divided by plus is negative and plus divided by minus is minus also. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Now 24 is positive. What is positive 24 divided by negative 6? You get negative 4 because you're dividing plus by minus. Okay? All right, now we are going to apply the quotient property of exponents to simplify the x and the y, okay? So um, if you're dividing exponents with the same base, what you do is you subtract the powers, okay? You subtract the smaller power from the bigger power and keep that expo exponential term in the position of the term with the higher degree, okay? So x to the sixth, has a higher degree, so we're going to subtract the smaller one from the bigger one and keep it upstairs, okay? So we have 6 minus 3. And then for the y's, since the bigger exponent is on top, we're going to um, keep the difference of the exponents on top, all right? So down here, we have y to the first power. So we're going to subtract this one from the 3 upstairs because 3 is bigger than 1, okay? Always um, keep your resulting exponent in the position of the exponent with the bigger degree, okay? All right, so this is a nice situation because um, the terms with the bigger degrees are upstairs here on numerators. That's why um, we end up with everything as numerators. So let's simplify this. We'll have negative 4x to the third y to the second power. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 4. Okay, let's take a look at problem 4. It says which situation is represented by bivariate data? Okay, so there are two types of data. We have univariate and bivariate. So let's come uh, distinguish them real quick. Univariate and bivariate. Uh, univariate is just one variable. And bivariate involves two variables. Okay, so 
what is what do we use these two types of data for univariates is just informational okay informational or descriptive or is describing something okay it tells you like a history but bivariate is used for comparison comparison or analysis okay this basically looking for some kind of connection between two different variables all right so um let's see which is bivariate here um option one a student lists her algebra quiz grades for one month the only data that's been collected here is um her quiz grades so this is univariate all right if you're still confused as to what the correct answer is ask yourself what is she comparing this data with nothing else it's just informational purposes okay Aresla records his weights before each match this is univariate only one variable here which is the weight okay is he comparing his weight with anything doing any comparisons the answer is no this is just informational um, purposes here a music musician writes down how many minutes she practices her instrument each day this is univariate also why is that uh, the only variable here is the number of minutes she practices is she comparing it with anything else no that's the only data that's been collected here four an ice cream vendor tracks the daily high temperatures and how many ice cream bars he sells each day what do you think this is this is by variance how do we know well one giveaway is see the word and it's telling you that there are two data sets that are being collected okay what are they the first data set is the temperature highs and the second one is um, number of ice cream bars that are sold okay we can see there's a connection here if it's a very hot day what do you think will happen to the number of ice cream bars sold it's going to go up right because people are thirsty and they're craving something that's cold and if the temperature is really low you expect the number of sales to drop okay so any data collection that involves multiple variables for the purposes of analysis or comparison that is um, a bivariate data okay all right let's move on okay so for problem five it reads a cylinder has a circular base with a radius of three units and a height of seven units what is the volume of the cylinder in cubic units so this problem involves finding volume of a cylinder if you consult your reference sheet the formula is provided there pi r square h is the formula for computing the volume of a cylinder okay uh, pi r squared is the area of the base and h is the height so in this problem um, we have the radius r is three units and the height h is seven units okay now we're going to plug in these two into this formula remember pi is not a variable it is a constant okay so v is equal to pi times the radius which is three um, square times the height of seven uh oh our height is seven i put h so our height is seven so here we're gonna make sure we make appropriate use of the order of operations you do your exponents first three square is nine so we have pi times nine times seven seven times nine is 63 pi 63 pi um, cubic units okay since we're multiplying three lengths 63 pi 
uh, cubic units. So our final answer is option number three. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. If you have any questions or need any support with the um, problems on the New York Regents exam, feel free to include your questions in the comment section below and we'll be glad to address it as soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com. Go ahead and visit it. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.